that women have come together, bearing with them their social movements, ideologies, and politics. So I think the ironies are very clear, and I'd like to thank Delia. Um, sorry for the patchy, but I decided to just throw in a few points. <laughs> Okay, um, if you have questions, comments, may I address your questions or comments? Can you take all them by your first name? Uh, I have a question for, for both Professor uh, Adelaide and Professor Adelaide. Actually, I'm not a feminist. <laughs> Maybe um, I have two questions actually. First, Professor uh, Abila said uh, uh, feminist movement, active movement that self decided, self decided uh, in in the U.S. Why is it so? Why is it so? Because, uh, maybe they isn't it because they they achieve some uh, political equality already. That's why maybe they don't want to do it anymore. That me, me that, it's my speculation. Me, the the. Feminist move, active movement in the U.S. Yeah. self sided because maybe they achieved something they wanted because the political, maybe political equality, maybe. I don't know. So I don't. I mean, this is my speculation. The second question is, um, in, in the Philippines, what does Filipino feminists want? What else? What else does? The, what else do they want? Because in my perspective, I mean, in my perspective, uh, maybe I'm, maybe because I'm. Coming from a foreign, patriarchal, superficial, maybe because I'm not feminist. But in my point of view, uh, Filipino women achieved so much, so much. As, in, as, as I told uh, Professor Aguilar a while ago, it's like Filipino women enjoy so much, uh, so many uh, uh, privileges, which uh, other Asian women don't don't enjoy. Because, that, like I, I told Professor, like in, in Korea, women couldn't couldn't achieve, um, maybe couldn't reach the highest like executive positions in corporate, and even even in schools, I, I told her that um, deans, chairs, even in uh, unlike Philippines, like humanities um, humanities um, departments, mostly women teachers, or yeah. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. But, but in, in Korea, it's like most of the teachers are male. I mean, high positions, even in academia, they're they're male. It's like, in the Philippines, even uh, the highest um, uh, paying, I mean, the highest earning uh, artistas are, are, are women, right? Around her, even even from from the seventies, eighties. That's what I know. And uh, most the the highest number of, I mean, women out outnumber the oil companies, right? Women, women, most of the most of the oil companies are women, right? So even economic, all W's, they are women, so, so the, the entire, maybe I'm too much generalizing, right? So the, the entire, entire economic status is also dependent on women in the Philippines, I, I might say. But, so it's like, what else do you want to achieve? That's just my, that's my, maybe I'm, this is very suicidal, maybe in front of the but, but, but I really want to ask this, what else do you want to achieve? Like, you want to grow, you want to raise, uh, like, women, uh, women Hennessy, women Jo, uh, women Gokume, or women, um, uh, well, like, what? Why not? Yeah, so what else do you want to achieve? That's my, that's, that's my answer. <laughs> I think that's a very, important question that should probably be answered by one of the women, younger women in this group. Uh, just one comment. It's true that if it, I think fully 75% of OFWs are women. But as, as Ida just whispered to me, is that empowering? You know, most of these women, many of them actually have families left behind. Am I right? Many of them have families left behind. Uh, uh, and they probably, if they had a choice, I would bet they wouldn't want to leave their children behind, nor their husbands. I mean, a lot of broken families have resulted from, from this situation. So it's not something that, you know, women would elect 
if they had a choice. Uh, but interestingly, again, studies of you know migration because of the particular approaches they use focus on on the choice. You know, focus on this as a choice. Also, they deny that it's economic factors. Practically every book, by the way, written on, on migration by Filipino American scholars, they preface their, their studies with an obligatory denial of what they call the economy as a cause of migration, which is interesting, don't you think? Maybe it's not the economy. It's maybe desire for adventure, travel, <laughs> maybe they were beaten up by their husbands. Those are some of the reasons. But no, not poverty. In fact, the really poor can't leave the country. So there's not this disavowal of poverty as a cause, which is really a retreat from class as a you know as a, as an analytical framework. Uh, but let me let me just throw out that question because I really want to hear from from the women here. How, how would you respond to Abby when he says, what, what more do you want, for God's sake? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you've, you've got it all. You've got it all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, but I, do, I can say that... that yeah. Yeah, the young women. I'd like to hear from the young women. What, what do you think? I mean, do you think women need to be... You know, I mean, because I, I remember, you know, one of my frustrations, and I, I was just so happy when I met women in Kalayan. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention Kalayan, of course, is your organization. And I was so happy to meet, meet women in Kalayan because, you know, I mean, they, they could articulate, you know, the, the need for, for women's emancipation. Let's we talk about emancipation at the time. Um, because when you... When I talk to regular folks in the 70s, they would say the same thing. <laughs> you know, women are, are liberated. In fact, I also looked at the sociological studies at the time. This is interesting. I think you should know this. I looked at the mainstream sociology in the Philippines, and you know what they said about Filipino women? They said, we have a matriarchal system. Matriarchal system, and you know why? Because in the Philippines, the practice is for women to handle the purse strings, right? So women, you know, if you hold the purse strings, then therefore you rule the household. But in fact, I then talked to women, because I wanted to find out, is this really a source of power? Well, first of all, there isn't much money to be had, and women were responsible for the survival, right? For feeding children. So what did that mean? They would give a, their husbands their, what is called their allowance. Yeah, they would give money for their husbands to buy cigarettes or for their vices, whatever those are, right? And the rest would be housekeeping money, household money, money for the children. Women never spent for themselves. I talked to middle class women, you know, who had you know, a little more money than the poor. Because I spoke to poor women, the middle class women, the rich women. And it's true, they all have on the purse strings. But the middle class women, you know, they wouldn't want to spend on themselves either. They felt really guilty if they bought a new blouse or a new, you know, for themselves. It was always for the children. So this is what was referred to as maternal altruism, right? That women, as little girls, are, are trained to have, so that they will be real women when they grow up. You know, the sacrifice, the maternal sacrifice. No, I, there's something interesting about that, and I'll cite very specific. Um, I do gender, gender mainstreaming. That's okay. Yeah, the National Transformation Corporation. And one of the things is, you know, gender sensitized them. Very interesting, this is male dominated, power sector, yeah, uh, technical um, uh, uh, engineers. In, and I met a lot of the men, and this is very consistent. I did 36 sessions. In the 36 session, at the session, they all said, women, Filipino women are so empowered now. Because now, I'm talking of engineers, huh? they're not poor, and certainly they're the ones that are everywhere. I say because they all give their paychecks now to the 